Welcome to the Tech Talk, leveraging your mainframe into the 22nd century. My name is Richard Nicola from Nastel Technologies. So we're going to look back today at the evolution of the mainframe and why the status quo really can't remain the same. We're going to talk about some strategies to operate in a modern serverplex and then I'm going to do a quick introduction to autopilot for system Z. So one question you might have is what do I mean by a mainframe? since there's lots of definitions and lots of images that come to mind when people mention mainframes. So specifically through this topic I'm going to be talking about mainframes that leverage the System Z or, or ZOS architecture. So if we go back and look at the history of the of the mainframe and why it you know why it's had some of the resiliency that it has. And I'm not here to give you a MIPS and and size and capacities and you know all of the varying sort of things uh, lecture today but I wanted to kind of look more at the usage of the uh, of the mainframe in, in computing so if we kind of jump way back to when you know when they started the main goals or the main sort of usage of the mainframe was specifically to house the the critical information of the of the customers so you know much is shown here with the castle and the kings is you know all of the information was centralized it was owned controlled and managed uh, in a central spot and well fortified so that that information was secure and all of the things that were uh, related with it but as time progressed we saw a great increase in the, in the distributed computing side in terms of you know needing information more people wanting access to it uh, more usages of that information and so on and so what we see here of course is that the the villages in addition to the castles needed access to that information and that's where middleware comes in and Nastel's been involved with middleware throughout the uh, the evolution of, of uh, computing and so no surprise that you know middleware plays a, a key role in being able to 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 provide access both to the the information housed uh, still uh, you know in the mainframe systems as well as being able to distribute that information and use it across the server plex and if we kind of take that to the next step of course we now have cloud computing and you'll notice here that in fact all of these uh, environments had cloud so of course cloud computing is the the obvious extension where now of course we're providing that information wherever it's needed you know around the globe across the you know all of the different application tiers and so on tied together by middleware but this brings in a couple of new models of, of uh, management and we'll talk a bit more about those as, as we go so why can't we keep the status quo right so let me f first start off by making a couple of assertions that I'll then come back and uh, and clarify right so the first one is that the mainframe is is going away well actually let me be more specific the mainframe is going away never um, you know it is um, it is here to stay the second assertion is that the experienced technicians who've been managing uh, these complex environments are becoming harder to find the third assertion that I have is that there are uh, you know existing mainframe based management tools but mainframe environments are now incorporated into the monitoring infrastructure of the serverplex where the technical staff are not mainframe educated so given those assertions I see a couple of challenges right the first is how do we enable the server supplex support team to monitor the mainframe as part of their overall monitoring uh, infrastructure without turning them into um, into experts so one of the questions I guess you might ask is I've used this term serverplex a couple of times so you know what is a serverplex well the serverplex is basically the set of servers now that are all operating together in order to, to basically manage or provide the uh, the cloud infrastructure and the components that represent the applications right it's it's not mainframe it's not distributed it's it's you know it's the entire uh, serverplex so but there is an opportunity here right and the opportunity of course is that if we can accomplish the uh, you know the the management and monitoring of this complex environment 
And by understanding that, uh, the performance of that environment, we now actually understand the composite applications that traverse it, right? And so, of course, once we do that, that provides better uh, customer service. And again, this is one of the reasons that the status quo simply can't maintain the same is because today, while the mainframe teams are able to manage those systems and they're, you know, they're able to, to work with them, as they move out to the server plex, you, know, you now need to get rid of those, you know, those isolated tiers and incorporate it in, into the rest of the in environment. OK, so let's look at the assertions that I made earlier in a little bit more detail. The first one, of course, is that the mainframe was never going away. Now, over the years, many people have predicted that the mainframes would go away, but in fact, they're, they're still with us. Now, I, you know, I will make one caveat to this. Of course, this being uh, December of, of 2012, many people believe that the Mayans have predicted the end of civilization is going to occur on the 21st of December. Should that happen, then yes, the mainframes will go away. However, since most of you are probably listening to this after that date, I suspect that the mainframes are still with us. The second, of course, point here is that the mainframes continue to hold a very solid role uh, in the processing of data. Now, there are new applications, and those new applications you know, are using lots of clever techniques to present their information, to interact with the user. But many of those leverage uh, the data uh, that still exists on those mainframe systems uh, through those existing interfaces. Okay. Now, the other thing I would note here is there's a belief that the dinosaurs, in fact, didn't disappear, that they evolved, right? That, that birds are basically an evolution of dinosaurs, right? Well, in that same way, right, the, the mainframes themselves are no longer the big old clunky systems that people kind of think of, you know, that take up whole buildings and, you know, those sort of things. They're just like any other server. They're rack mounted. They can fit in the data center and be used exactly as needed when needed uh, and, you know, completely scalable and so on. So they've evolved as well to fill into that new, uh, new, new role. The second assertion, of course, is, what, is that the experienced technicians who've been managing these, in, these complex environments are just becoming harder to find, right? Well, this is very clear that this is happening. Now, most people will agree that the mainframe experts, right, those that have years of experience working with the mainframe, are nearer at retirement age. And it's really the banking downturn that's, that's kept you know, many of those uh, individuals still in the marketplace working, right? So, you know, that in itself is, is one reason they're still around, or in fact, we'd probably have a bigger shortage already today. And then, of course, the younger uh, technicians that are coming into the market, you know, they're looking at new opportunities, uh, you know, to, to, for, for fortune, and they're not considering the mainframe as, as something that they're interested in. Which means, of course, that this 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 set of individuals is going to uh, is going to decrease. When you combine that with the fact that while there are existing mainframe tools that are out there that have been incorporated, the problem comes is that the technical staff are not mainframe uh, educated that now have to manage the serverplex. So they've brought they've come up through you know. Uh, college and 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 uh, original sort of op uh, jobs where they were involved with more of the distributed, not the mainframe environment. They can recognize alerts. They can you know kind of understand that, but they really don't understand perspective of what they mean to the applications and to the rest of the server plex. And of course, the existing experts, the ones who are there tend to leverage their existing 3270 style interfaces. So even if they were to walk through and help a, someone actually understand what a problem was and what was going on, they're probably going to be using these interfaces which are foreign to the new, uh, to the new workforce. OK, so how do we have to change going forward? It's clear that we need to look at techniques and solutions to address the needs of the of the teams that are going to be supporting these environments. They need to have a better understanding of the composite application. These applications that are basically spread all over the serverplex, they're going to need to be managed and and you you know you have to be able to have visibility into 
into all of that. While the existing technologies, the existing things that the mainframe teams are doing are great, they create these silos of understanding and they need to be able to be distributed out across all of the teams that need to have uh, interest. Goal, of course, is to provide better customer service, increase the value of, of the IT processing to the business. What can we expect to, to, to happen? Clearly, rather than focusing on green screen applications, right, that, that isolate the data and the expertise, the new solutions have to combine data across all of those boundaries and then use that to predict, to diagnose problems without any regard to platform or, or other boundaries within the environment. Okay. Now, they're going to be different because you know they're not going to be just event based integration that's you know that's a good technique to centralize problems but in reality in this case you need to be able to extract data you need to be able to apply rules across that set of data you need to be able to apply the expertise to that entire scope of information so as a simple example right you may see a spike in web processing ordering time but the ultimate cause of that is a kicks transaction that's abedning because there's a lack of of disk space on an oracle database somewhere and and you and you can't have three different teams all looking at their piece of the world trying to figure out what's going on in order to analyze that type of a problem okay. now what about those existing tools? They're not going to go away in, in the near term. There are good reasons they still exist. And, and so we're going to have to be able to take that information. We're going to want to integrate that with the rest of the data and use that as a way to supplement the, the management of the, of the serverplex. In reality, the outlook is actually very promising. By incorporating these two worlds together you're going to have the investment in the mainframe is going to continue to be leveraged you're going to be able to adapt to the existing expert decline by filling those voids with with new tools and not overwhelming the people that remain right both either the mainframe people that are still in that are there or or the new staff that's responsible for the serverplex you can't overwhelm them but the ultimate, of course, is you still have to provide the same value of service uh, that you always have. So let me take a minute to talk about NASTEL and Autopilot. Autopilot provides for early warning of application performance problems. And that's nothing new. NASTEL has been involved in cross-application, application performance monitoring uh, for many, many years, right? So the concept, while unique in this case and that we're also including ZOS is no different than any other solution that NASTEL provides. So the value comes from the ability of NASTEL to correlate the real-time ZOS data with information from the web and the cloud and ultimately be able to search for patterns and look at problems uh, that are imp impacting the entire uh, serverplex from the view and so this is one example here where we're looking at some of the different systems uh, that are operating within the serverplex specifically autopilot for system Z collects information from the ZOS systems themselves and analyzes it to determine the health uh, within the environment and it discovers monitors and analyzes you know several of the key applications running on on ZOS and, and an example of that, we have you know IBM WebSphere MQ, we have Kix Transaction Server, uh, DB2, the, the ZOS systems itself. And if we look at some of the specific features that we offer, we have real-time monitoring, we have pre-built reports, we can capture information going to the system log into the console, we can identify the performance bottlenecks within the system, and of course ultimately our goal is to provide that predictive proactive notification as well as automated actions based on user-defined uh, policies these are some of the examples uh, of different types of views that can be generated uh, either using you know custom views or the out-of-the-box views that autopilot provides looking at the different areas of the uh, of the environment so if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us at any of the sources here, which Charlie's going to tell you about. Charlie? Thank you, Richard. 
That was quite insightful. I was wondering what happens in the 22nd century, and now I know. Hope everyone found this just as helpful, and if you have additional questions, you can forward them to me at crich at nastl.com. And I want to remind everyone that this is part of an ongoing series of tech talks covering both Java and WebSphere MQ and Mainframe today. Our next one is on January 16th, and the title is Java Garbage Collection CMS versus G1 in Java 7, a real world comparison. It's a long title. And Albert Mavashev, our CTL, will be leading that session. Thanks very much.